And if you can't, take a time out. In this parenting model, the parent takes the time out, not the child. Because what time outs does for these kids is it reinforces that sense of shame, abandonment. See, nobody wants me. See, I'm unlovable. It's like, it doesn't work. They need more time in. Time in parenting. And you know what? As hard as this is, and it's, it's what makes this experience so hard is because parents who've adopted or fostered children do have to work harder. But I do believe it makes you a better person because you work harder on your own regulation. You can really feel deep feelings in life and experience and help heal a child and provide love and attachment. Not rescuing, but help shifting and making the world a better place. So you're going to be tested. Um, you're going to be tested. But if you react to my negative emotional states, then I will feel more powerful and more in control. And I will learn, actually, to be more powerful and more, con and more control because you're out of control. <sighs> By remaining calm time, 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 right? Time and time and time and time again. I will begin to trust you. Okay, my dad is here for me, and I can go to him when I need to get a need met and let my guard down. I don't have to be so hard all the time. I don't have to push all the time. But we have to provide this emotional safety for them, okay, so that they come to us. Parent who yells, the child perceives the parent as a threat of rejection. Here's the thing, I have even adult adoptees who come see me and they go, anytime I get a look from somebody, I immediately think it's all about me. And I go, okay, you need to do what's called reality testing. Ask, I see you're upset, is everything okay? Just check in, is it something that I did? Not who I am. <laughs> is it something that I did? Oh, oh, you're having a bad day at work. Okay, got it. Not everything is about you. And that's the narcissistic wound that it's all my fault wound, which is primal, which is egotistic, which comes from childhood. So we need to help them differentiate out. Def differentiate out. And even as parents, you know, coming in and going, okay, I had a really bad day. Just naming entertainment. Just letting kids understand what's happening. Your parents, we're all under pressure, you know? So the kids know it's not about them because kids will internalize, it's about me. Um, okay, there's a great tool from Attachment Parenting called storytelling. So anytime you want to tell them something, that's important, just like the sandwich metaphor. Tell it with a tone of storytelling. It's such a great tool because it conveys, I'm listening, I'm inviting the listener in. I used to do this with my son whenever I, tried, when I was attempting to get him dressed. He'd be like, I'm gonna tell you a story. So, below icon. Attached from parenting can work for all children. I wish this would be the parenting for the world, attachment parenting, okay? It especially is being used with children with trauma because they need more compassion, more empathy because of what's happened to them. But it can be done for all kids. So I'm telling him a story and getting him changed and he's listening, connected, eye contact. Um, it's very helpful when you wanna give information. And these kids need a lot of information. They need to know the beginning, the middle, and the end. They need to know what's going to happen. Just like you do when you go on a vacation. Hmm, let me see exactly what the room looks like and the beds and the bathroom. I need to know everything before I say submit, right? Uh, 
these kids, especially kids who've had a lot of inconsistencies in relationships and experiences, they need to know a lot of what's going to happen, where are we going, what's going to happen there as best as possible. It takes two minutes. And then um, what's, what the outcome is. So they see the whole through line, the cause and effect. Um, to support transitions, let them know the beginning, middle, and an end. Another little story. Adoptive parent. She adopted seven children. God bless her. Also learning how to be a trauma-informed, attachment-informed parent. It's the Christmas party at the adoption agency. They all get into the car. They all drive to the adoption agency. Six kids get out, but one. He's seven, was in three foster homes, and was the identified child in the family because he was the one going to therapy. They had a lot of challenges, okay? He would not get out of the car. Hysterical. Oh, no, go in there. No, no, no. Mom, confused, overwhelmed, was also a parent resource, resource parent, you know, sweating under her clothes. Why won't my child get out of the van? Um, right? Am I a bad parent? What am I not doing right? Finally, she gets him out with threats, bribes, still not understanding what happened here. They get into the party, they open their gifts, they all get their gifts, and they come back home. So she tells me this in therapy, and I said, were you curious? Did you come back? And no, I, you know, uh, he got punished, and he didn't have something or whatever. She was still in the consequencing mode not understanding what his behavior was communicating and then consequencing him for that. It doesn't work with this population. So we go and we sit with him. I say, so Michael, wow, you were having so many big feelings. What was happening? Your mom didn't know what was going on. You know what he said? I thought she was giving me away. He thought, no wonder, we're like, no wonder you were so upset. No wonder you, were. I had to validate all that. No wonder you were so upset. That must have been so scary for you. Oh my gosh. Mom just was like, stunned. Now she knows with this child, she has to do more attachment trauma informed parenting. She has to tell him. Beginning, middle, and end. We're all getting in the car. We're all going to go to the party. Just a little story time. We're all going to go in the party. We're all going to get our gifts. We're going to sit at the table. We're all going to eat and have a good time. Then we're all going to grab our toys, put it in a bag, put it all in the car, go home, and then play at home all afternoon. He needed to see the whole through line. And this is what gets tricky with children, especially in foster care. They just don't know what's going to happen. And so their blueprint is everything that's going to happen right now is what's happened. So I need to know what is going to happen, please. Um, it's in your best interest as a parent.